All right, good afternoon. Um, welcome to part two of our series um, in uh, present presentation methodology. My name is Adam Cohen. I'm with the PCS Telesales Organization. For those of you who are watching the CD, for those of you here, you all know me. Um, what we're going to do today is go over the next piece of what we did last week. Last week we talked about um, how do you qualify, how do you get to the point where you have the understanding of their business requirements so you can do a relevant demo and knock out the proof step in one shot. Um, I want to tell a quick little story about why I did this, why I do this. Um, what this says up here is, well, this is based on PVCS Professional today. This could apply to any product. The reason we're not going to do them on, here's a version manager presentation, here's a tracker presentation is, in my experiences as I've been doing this, and I know I've heard stories from a couple of you guys about who are also using these templates, um, I've been doing version manager demos but preceding them with information about the suite. And inevitably, it leads to additional questions about Tracker, about Config Builder. We go a little bit more in-depth demos. And we've been using this methodology <coughs> to turn point solution sales into pro deals, right? By getting in front of the customers, our products are excellent today, the best they've ever been, um, better than our, anything our competition has in the market. The best thing we could do is show it to a co the customers. But we don't want to show it before we create vision. To some extent, the work we did last week, we were talking about in terms of doing a uh, a complete and competent TIG, right? Going over all their details, understanding their needs, helping qualify a little bit, helps you build vision. Some of that is also going to be done in this overview presentation. And the reason we're going to do an overview prior to jumping into any demo is just like there are, what, 30 of you sitting around this table, um, I've talked to maybe eight of you about the work we're going to be doing today. And a lot of you have had input, but not all of you have seen this, not all of you have been, have been involved. So in any meeting that we do, we want to make sure that we, everybody understands what they're about to see. When you do placeware-based demonst place demonstrations, more often than not, there'll be people in the room who you've never talked to. And this is your opportunity to preface what they're about to see and put it in a light that will help you convince them that this is going to help them. Um, what we're going to show is a series of slides which are the basis for a meeting, right? What are you going to show prior to going into your demonstration? But the point of this is not free to learn these slides. It's not free to learn these talking points. If you don't have a presentation you like to use, if you don't know what to say to them, these are things that a bunch of us have worked out as best practices here. And you can use these exactly as is and come across competent and professional and do a great meeting. But the real objective here is to understand what's the flow of these meetings? What are the points we want to make sure we always cover? What are the things we want to always walk away with, right? Um, and there are, so as we go through this, I, I want to, we'll continually point out that the essence of it here is the process that we follow, not the content specifically. Um, Jeff Bertram, who I believe is in the room, is Jeff here, had a, an, in, an interesting experience last week using this methodology, and I wanted to bring him up for a quick second to tell the story. Um, just... Just if you could just elucidate your example with the... Just, if, just a real simple version manager deal. Guy was just, well, we want to see it. We're pretty confident in it. We know SCM. We have visual source safe. Just in general, can you show me version manager? Just want to see the check-in, check-out, everything. It seems like it's a 10, 15 user deal, nothing big. Um, go through here, I said, well, before we go into that, let's do this, find out what you're currently doing. And by running him through this, it turned it, in, it turned it into a 15 user pro deal because by the end of it, they were like, well, oh, we need that too. And they started adding on, and it tied the whole suite in. They go, oh, you do that too. And they can start seeing a full life cycle and a full method of advancing their entire process and everything they do. Because it's a good encapsulation. And it made the demo mine. It was no longer Elaine's and Richard's and, and Sean's. It was me performing the presentation, them answering the technical points, and then me being able to cap the meeting at the end. So it, it made the customer talk to me not to Elaine, Richard, and Sean, because it, 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 I'm sure we've all had the thing at the end of the meeting where they go, well, Sean, how much does this cost? <laughs> Elaine, wh wh what's the price on this? And that's supposed to be us. And they, and they should have that recognition. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. So rather than do a bunch of slides or overview about what is this about, I wanted to just jump right into it and we can talk about it as we go. So what we have here is, let's assume for a minute we had a customer who asked for a demonstration. Rather than give them a demo, we went and did the TIG process. So we sent them our document. They filled out our survey. We got their specific issues back. We did a, a, a phone meeting with them. 
or if you're in the field, right, you know, and you're face to face, we did a face to face sit down. We go over those requirements. We understand their business issues. We understand the specific technical requirements. Then we would come back and demonstrate to those issues. Doing those previous steps let us build a specific vision of the customer. So the idea here today is to just demonstration should just be about confirmation of what's going to work for us. So the first thing we want to do in any meeting is give the customer an agenda. Right? What are we about to do? We're all sitting down at a table. What are we going to show you? These, there are a number of slides here. I think the total count in the presentation is about 22. A bunch of these things are for after the demo. Your pre-demo overview of the full pro suite should only be about 16 slides. The idea is you don't want to take a lot of time with each one. We're not talking about you guys presenting for 45 minutes prior to getting into the product. This should take no more than a minute or two a slide. We're, the talking points are for one or two sentences per slide. Um, if the customers take you off track, if the customers ask you questions and it becomes a conversation, great. Then it's they're the ones doing that. But you don't want to be the one making this take a long time. Um, but we want to give them a basic, what are we doing today? And then we want to follow up on it with, the first thing we do is we introduce ourselves. Because there will, when I was in the field, what I found is I'd walk into these meetings and there would always be three or four people in the room who I had no idea who they were. They had never met me. They weren't quite sure exactly what they were going to see today. They were told to attend. Um, and if we take the moment to go around the room, and this is true whether you're face-to-face -face or on the phone, take the moment to go around the room, ask everybody, make sure they know who we are, what we're going to show today, and then ask them, who are you, what do you do, and what are your expectations for sitting here today? Right? That might help us enhance what we're doing. We can make sure that we understand if somebody's a problem in the room, if they're not, if they have issues that we haven't heard about before. Maybe there's power in the room we weren't aware of. <coughs> it's our opportunity to know because those guys won't volunteer that unless you ask it. Um, we put it on the slide so you don't forget. They don't forget. They know exactly what they're... They, everybody looks at that slide, they know that they're about to get asked a question. <laughs> um, we, we isolated in, a, in previous meetings the customer's business objectives. Right? Why are they looking at us? What are they interested in? Why do they think these products can help them? What requirements do they have? Right? So we had that conversation. We wrote all that stuff down. We explored it. Let's put it in front of them. And when we put it in front of them, in the talking points, we're going to ask a couple of basic questions. I mean, and it's, are these the requirements that you have? Right? These are the requirements you said you had in the TIG. Does everybody agree th this is it? Are these the only ones? Is there anything missing? Is there anything you need to clarify? Did we get any of this wrong? Right? Let's cover that before we go into the demonstration. I did a demo yesterday with Elaine. And the first thing that we did, we spent about 15 minutes with the guy just saying, you know, I know we talked about it. Let's talk about it again. What are the things you need to see? You've been playing with the eval version of the product. Help us understand exactly what you need to understand today so you can say yes tomorrow. And he gave us six points, and Elaine and I, one by one, knocked him down in the demo. I said, is that it? He said, yep, get it. We went down the list. I understand it all. He's cutting me a purchase order right now. Wasn't a big deal, but it's got interesting points for other reasons, right? It turned into, because we did that process and because we found some creative uses for our tools and we went through this presentation methodology, we turned an 8K deal into a 25K deal. And we closed it right away. This is the only merit overview slide in this entire presentation. It gives a customer a basic idea of that we're not a fly-by-night, we're not new, we have substantial revenues, we have lots of, we've, sold, we've done this before, we've done it for a long time. Um, and you have some basic talking points, something like, look, with over a million licenses in place around the world, and 90, over 90% of the Fortune 100 using our uh, digital asset management tools and enterprise change management tools, we're the most widely accepted industry standard and have been for over 25 years. The point here is we want to give you one sentence to say to each of these that bring the point across. Um, the idea here, and, and you don't have to use, once again, this is a template. W so what we've done so far, we've introduced ourselves, we've reiterated their business requirements, we've had them reintroduce themselves and confirm the requirements back to us. One of the points we want to make sure that we talk about is we want them to see value. We want them to understand what the value of, our of what we're presenting to them is. Customers are always aware of what the specific techno technological things they can't do today are. Right? We bump into each other and we check in code. I overwrote Bob. Sam overwrote me. Um, we don't do builds effectively. They know that kind of stuff. But what, when we sell to the development organizations, they are not always aware of what the specific business impact of their bad process is. What does it cost the business to do it the way they do it? So people are always aware of the stuff above the line. The project team knows about this stuff. This is stuff they deal with every day. This is the stuff they don't think about. 
But this is the stuff that really impacts the business. And this is where you're going to build your real ROI. So we did another training about a month and a half ago where we talked about positioning yourself to win and uh, using the business case and ROI to, to do this. You want to get everybody thinking about it at every point you can. So this is just a, a quick point. We throw it up there to let them make that point. Um, well, that was about ineffective systems. Creating effective systems um, gives you, let's the idea here is we, we give you talking points that are not, and I can read them through them if you'd like, because um, you don't want to read the slides. It's the worst thing you can do. So in this case, look, the goal is to enable you to utilize a consistent way of working across your projects so that you'll always know the who, the what, the when, and most importantly, the why of where your project is and what your team is doing, right? At the same time, you can realize continual improvement from a defined and repeatable method. The idea here is you say a couple of sentences, they make the point, you move on. If they ask questions, because this slide is sort of keyed to if they're interested in process-based development, if they're interested in CMM, if they're interested in ISO 9000, this slide's going to talk to those people, and they're going to ask questions about it. If it's not on the forefront of their mind, you at least want to make the points and move on. Then we're going to jump into what do we have to offer, which is something we skip a lot. If somebody says, I want a version manager demo, we go and show them version manager. But we need to talk about everything we do. Because this is truly our competitive advantage, that we can cover them across the board in a variety of ways as they grow, as their processes change, and we want to try to make those points. Um, so what we'd say here is the PVCS family gives you a complete set of tools to address all the digital asset management needs of your enterprise. Whether you need point solutions for specific tasks, like version control or issue management, packaged application management, web content management, or even enterprise-wide process-driven, complete systems, we can provide it, right? So you don't have to say a lot. You don't have to go into a lot of technical detail. It's not the point. You're the sales guy. You're not the, the techie. But it gives them the, the big picture. And, the, and people, I find, always ask questions here. This is their opportunity to say, so, oh, we're looking at Pro. You guys do other stuff. What do those other tools do? Explain that. And maybe this will help us add in Content Manager, which makes is a huge competitive advantage against most of our day-to-day -day version control competitors. Or talk about the futures with dimensions and where they could go. Since we're going to do a pro demo, we can isolate down. Now, from here, everything from here to the demo are point-specific, product-specific slides that you can mix and match. And if you were doing a dimensions demo, obviously, we'd give you different slides. But the format we're following is pretty much the same, regardless. What we did here is, if you look, here we had this. We basically just zoomed in a little bit. And we're looking at what we're going to show today. If we're doing a pro demo, even if all they ask to see is version manager, you want to make sure they understand that we have more than that, that we are more than that, that we do more than that for them. So we talk about, this is the opportunity to say, well, it's a suite comprised of a couple of different tools, right? And the specific talking points that the committee wrote down, and by the way, let me take this moment to give thanks to a couple of people. I'll do it in the middle rather than at the end. The slides, the talking points that we've created that we're going to do as handouts at the end were created by a variety of people. Um, the, the pre-sales team, Elaine, Richard, and Sean were very involved. Jim Landis has been hugely helpful. John Merdler, Jason Michel, Alan Jezik, Jeff Bertram, all have had huge input into what we're showing here today. Um, Steve Burford helped a lot with the talking points. The, the point is here that we've tried to find what are the best practices. What is every, the people that have been here the longest and have the most input <laughs> or have the most to input potentially. We've, we got them together in the early stages. Now, once again, like I said last week, if any of you look at any of this and say, you know what, that's crap, it doesn't apply to what I do. Tell us what does. If there's something we're missing, we need to know about it. If there's something we didn't get, we want to add it in. If there's something here that doesn't apply to you, let us know. Now, we're not talking about, in this specific customer circumstance, I don't need that slide. Don't use that slide. What we're talking about is the process, the flow, and the overall way we do these things. Um, so we'd start out with, look, today we're going to review PVCS Professional Plus Suite. The suite is comprised of three integrated tools designed to meet the needs of your development team by giving them the ability to control and automate all the tasks related to the, their day-to-day -day development processes. Right? We don't have to go into a lot of detail. We don't have to talk about a lot of stuff. We just say that, move on. Now we're going to go into what is Tracker. Um, Tracker gives you a central repository for the why of any change you need to raise, plan, or manage through a life cycle. It gives you the, uh, an easy to use interface, so it will let you very quickly and easily establish priorities, assign ownership, manage handoffs, track issues through your specific lifestyle, 
life cycle, sorry, and maintain it. <laughs> I don't want to get anybody's lifestyle here. You know. um, and maintain a detailed audit trail of all changes to any digital asset across your enterprise, as well as give you the ability to maintain relationships between issues and all your related digital items. Really, the idea here is there are three slides you're going to go through for each product, right? One is, what is it? What does it do? What does it look like? How do you get there? We have the same format we're going to follow for version manager. We have a couple of quick talking points. Um, you don't want to read the slide once again, so we wrote a couple of quick sentences for you. But if you have things you want to say to these slides, say what you say. You're the one who's going to know your customer best. You're the one who's going to know what their issues are. But this is your opportunity to position yourself as a credible technical expert without having to be piping up during the actual demo. Right? Set the stage. Establish ownership of the meeting. Establish yourself as the lead. Move on. So what is it? The slide is going to give them some boxes, shows them some of the key features in the tool. Well, the kinds of things we're thinking we would want to say here are, here are some of the key features of Tracker. Sorry. Um, it's extremely flexible, easily adaptable as your environment and process change. It's easy to install. It's easy to train on. And it's fast to show its return on investment and increased productivity and fewer errors due to better team communication. Right? So generic language that anybody could say, but it's your job as a sales rep to. Um, this is an opportunity to, I found on this particular slide and the comparable slide for version manager, customers will always ask questions. And this always leads to a conversation about how would they use it, what platforms are they on. This is an opportunity to get a little bit more technical if you want to. Remember, you have an essay on the phone with you or a pre-sales rep. So anything, you, you're not going to get out of your depth because they're going to help you with that. Here we basically have the opportunity to talk about, look, it provides, Cracker provides a selection of user interfaces that allow your people to coordinate their efforts, be in sync on team and individual priorities, blah, blah, blah. In order to provide you unparalleled stability and scalability, we support a variety of enterprise class databases. So gives them a picture. Now, do I have to say at this point, hey, we don't support Unix. We have Windows Web. We have SEC integration. We have a toolkit. It's right there. It's obvious. I don't have to go into that stuff. If they're not sure, they'll ask me questions. Then we go version manager. What is it? What does it do? How do you get there? Um, once again, the talking points are going to be very similar. Um, rather than me read this, because I know this stuff, I've read it. I'm going to pull somebody up to help me read these slides. Jason, you want to do one? What page? This one, here. You have version manager slide, version manager talking points. Here, wait, let's give you a mic. So the slide before you, you see here, it's version manager allows you to archive and organize all of your digital assets, no matter what the file types are or where they're stored. What this gives you is the means to control these file changes, enable code reuse, provide for multiple workspace to enable effective team-based development. Version manager also maintains a detail and audit trail of all those changes, provides extensive security options and controls. And as your needs evolve, it allows you to continue to control all your digital assets as your processes change. The reason I brought Jason up to do it is, my point is, all of it's written down. Anybody can walk up. You can do this tomorrow. You can do this this afternoon. There's not a lot of training you're going to need to do because it's right in front of you. You throw the slides up. If you're not sure what to say, you read the paragraph. It's easy. It's going to make sense. If, you don't like, if you're not sure if you like it, edit it before you go. Um, <laughs> you know, you don't like my words, use yours. Uh, so we go to the next slide. Here are some of the key features of Version Manager. Pause, right? You let them wait. Let them look for a second. They might see something they're interested in. Um, and once again, we say something very generic. Version Manager is fast to deploy, fast to adapt to changes in your environment, easy to administrate with point and click features that optionally can be turned on or off, which is why this is a tool of choice for over a million IT professionals and software developers. After a statement like that, you really don't need to say anything else, right? <laughs> um, the Version Manager architecture slide is a little bit more complicated, but really we want to make the point of Wherever you want to be, Version Manager is right there for you. Wherever your developers happen to work, it's right there. So the, the text we wrote here, very short, with the broadest platform support options for the, our GUI client and command line interfaces, a variety of integrations into the most widely used IDEs, Windows Explorer and Microsoft Office 2000 interfaces, and web browser clients, Version Manager becomes the backbone of your digital asset management system or enterprise change management system. We're still sort of struggling with what is this phrase? What is the space we're selling to? What do we call it? I know that Stephen King came up and said he doesn't like the word change. Um, they're not sure what that word is, but we can sort of whatever term they come up with that we decide we like, we're going to put in there. Um, 
this is all written for Tracker 7.1 VM 6.8, which is why I talked about Windows Explorer interfaces and Office 2000 interfaces, um, which were, that's the web dev stuff and what web dev will provide you. So this is not going to be need to modify two weeks from now when we come out with the new product. It's ready to go right now. Um, we have to change one graphic there, so don't mind that. But it's pretty straightforward. Ma makes the point. Config Builder, there's much less to say, and there's really less to show. Um, Config Builder gives you what you need to reliably create your applications. It allows you to create a defined and repeatable way to do builds across multiple platforms. You have less features, just a couple. Here are some of the key features of Builder. We pause. It's a powerful scripting tool that automates your build process with little to no human interference. Um, integrations to version manager allow you to build your current applications and over time give you a controlled and auditable way to rebuild your applications exactly as it was whenever you need it automatically. They're going to get that. Any questions they have on Config Builder, I've been here for five years. I'm pretty technical. I let them be answered by the pre-sales reps of the essays because it's not a tool I want to get into too much, but we want to make the point that we have it because it's something that people are typically concerned about when they look at these kinds of applications for development. There is no what it looks like because it's a command line tool. Okay, that's, that's it for the pre-demo stuff, right? How long did it take me? It took me about 13 minutes to run through it with stops, right? In this format. You could run through this in 10 minutes, which is the point. There's some stuff we're going to do after the demo because obviously we didn't close the meeting. All we did was open it. We prefaced what we're about to do. Now we do the, here's the Jim Landis show, or here's the Sean Cleese show, or here's the Elaine Willis show. And they're going to jump in and, go, and we're going to go down that requirements list that the customer specified they have. We're going to prove the points. And we're going to do the demos as we always have. So what's different about this? What's different is you ran the meeting. You opened it. You positioned yourself as an expert. You established that you're the one running it. And you're the person they're going to come back to and ask questions of. So we do the demo. Demo goes. It goes well. We need to close the meeting. There are some things we want to establish. We want to make sure that we always talk about everything else that we have to offer to the customer, right? Because our solution is just that. It's a solution. So it's not about, I send you a CD, you write me a check, good, now your problems are solved. Because that's not how it works for anybody. And we don't want to leave with the customer with the impression that that's what we are about. That we understand their issues, we understand our technology, and we can put the two things together to help them, give them what they need to solve their own problems. So we want to cover a couple of points. We want to come back and say, okay, now you've seen the products. We've, you, we've talked about your requirements. We showed you what we have. Let's talk about what else you need to know about Marant and about how this is going to work for you. First thing we need to talk about is support net. Um, and we wrote, and I got the, these various departments to help me write blurbs about them. And this um, support net provides world-class product support and upgrades that, will need to, that you will need to be successful. We're there whenever you need us by phone, web, fax, or email. Our extensive knowledge base of common scenarios and best practices in our upgrade and patch library sites are available to all our SupportNet customers. We do this to ensure that you get the benefit of our 25 years of experience in enterprise change management and get the returns and productivity that you need. To help you get the returns and productivity that you need. Right? Straightforward, you covered the point. Now, you don't have to, oh my god, it's on the quote, but I never told them what it was. Or they say, hey, what is this other line item? You don't miss that kind of stuff. They should know we're here to help them for consulting purposes. Um, let's get somebody else to do this to make the point that, I mean, just reading. Um, Jeff, you want to do it? We have a variety of ways that our in-house experts can help you gain immediate advantage by implementing a complete solution to your specific needs. We also have specialists in advanced configuration ma management methodologies such as CMM and CM2 as well as federal audit requirements for various industries to help you meet your evolving needs over time. You don't really need to say much more about consulting. They'll ask. Right? But it makes the point that we can provide a complete solution. We understand the complex methodologies, and we have people certified to do it. Um, we talk about training a little bit. With, over, with more than 20 training centers across North America, as well as the ability to deliver standard and customized training to you at your site, Merritt University gives your staff the knowledge and confidence to take these technologies and turn them into business advantage for you. If you have your own in-house training staff, we have programs that will teach them all they need to know to train on these applications, and we can provide you with courseware materials that are current, accurate, and complete. 
I can't tell you how many customers I have who I found out after the fact, spent three, four, five months writing some in-house training course in version manager, and they, God knows how much they spent doing it. It turns out that the course was incomplete or didn't hit all the highlights, and they could have bought courseware from us for $25,000. And it, that, that's, you know, my bad that I never brought it up, right? It's something that I should have brought up early on. This way we make sure that nobody forgets to bring up all the things a customer needs to know. Every time we bring it up, it's an opportunity for you to sell them something else. It's an opportunity for them to realize there's another place we can help them. And then ASAP, right? So we want, so really there are a couple of messages here. If we look at the last couple of slides, we come out of the demo and we say, we can support you, we can implement it, we can train you. If you want, we can just host it. And on the hosted side, you know, Merit ASAP is a completely hosted de deployment option that removes your risk of delayed starts, unforeseen expenses, and failed implementations, which is people's biggest fear about when they buy a technology, right? So we're hitting them where they live. It allows you to bring us in as a partner in your success by using our staff of highly trained technical account managers to get you up and running quickly, implemented to your unique processes and needs without the need to purchase licenses, support contracts and servers, or retain highly trained and compensated tool administrators. These solutions can be hosted at our secure site or even in your own data center while still getting the benefits of remote outsourced tool administration. So we make the quick point, you don't want to buy it, great, we'll do it for you. You don't want to put it at our site, great, we'll put it at your site. Right, that's, that's all you need to say about ASAP. Now we put, we've just laid out in five minutes all the options in front of the guy. Everything he's going to need that's not the CD. Okay, so what did we do? We opened the meeting, we positioned it well, we set an agenda, we found out everybody who was in the room, what their issues were, what their specific requirements were. We validated the requirements we walked into the meeting with. We did a brief overview of the product line, what we're going to show today. Then we went and did the technical demo, and we came back, and you guys are responsible. I am, every time I do a demo, I am responsible for what we walk away with. I know that I've had the experience where when I hand something off to the field, I, it doesn't happen all the time, it's happened a couple of times where I, I, they have a meeting and I get back, so what happened? What do we do next? They say, it was a great meeting. Do we have a next step? Oh, you should probably call them and find out what we should do next. Or, it was great, they loved us, so what do we do? You know, and we don't get that complete information. So we want to prompt everybody to make sure that we ask the relevant questions. What do you need to walk out of a meeting with? Well, you always want to ask, like I'm going to do in five minutes with you guys, do you have any questions, right? So you ask the customer, do you guys have any questions? Is there anything we didn't cover, anything you want to know, anything we need to clarify? Did we address your business issues, right? We started, we went into this meeting with requirements. You came to find out specific technical information. Did we hit it? If not, what did we miss? Let's, do it, let's deal with that right now. That way you don't get that call three days later. You know, we liked it, but you know, we really didn't see this. We we're hoping to see it. Now we're going to go with Star Team because they had it. Because typically when I get those, it was something we can do, it just wasn't covered well. It's not that we don't have the capability. <sighs> Inevitably in these demonstrations, during the course of it, there'll be a, they'll ask a question that we don't know the answer to, we have to find out and get back to them. We'll ask them a question they're not sure about, they'll have to get back to us with, what are those data points? Who owes who what information? Let's clarify that before we get off the phone. It's so on the board, you prompt it, the customers see it, we all do it. And then the, the most basic question, what do we do next? Right, we're going to get off the phone, when are we going to talk next? Are you ready to buy? Do you need a proposal? How do we go forward? And then closing, right? Put your contact information on the board, right there, so they don't have to ask. Now they don't, they don't question, are they going to call back Elaine or are they going to call back you? The only person's name who's up there is a sales rep. There's a reason for that. If you want your email address there, you can put it as well, right? It's, an open, it's just a template. We want, that way, now if we run through this whole process, we've established a couple of things, as we've talked about, right? You're in charge. You're the guy they want to talk to. You want, or the girl, lady, sorry. You understand their issues. You've gone over their requirements with them. You've, you, you also probably picked up three or four new contacts at that company, right? Because there are people in the room you didn't know before. You didn't have their names. You didn't have their contact information. And now you do. Right? So you've established contact to other roles that you weren't talking to. Biggest problem I've had over the years is sales cycles where I only knew one or two people at the company. Had one today where I've been dealing with uh, the director of QA and the project manager on this project, and I called today and found out that both of those people are no longer with the company. And this was a February upside deal. So what do I do? 
I was lucky I got to the CEO and found out what was going on and got delegated down to a different person. But that's difficult. Now, if I'd had more contacts, if I knew three or four other people at that company, the fact that those two guys were now gone might not have mattered at all. So you have this opportunity to expand those relationships. That's pretty much the presentation. Now, we have the handouts of the talking points. These are the handout. You have the slides. You have the paragraphs on each. What do you say to each slide? All here. Everybody can walk away with this. This presentation will be on KMS and it will also be emailed around to everybody. Um, if you come up with changes, and I encourage you to do it, right? What, what's going to make this work better for you? Don't just change it and keep your copy of the changes. Let us know. Let's, let's, if you have a change that's going to help everybody, let it help everybody. Because when I sell successfully in my territory, I guarantee you it helps you in California or it helps you in Nebraska. Because customers talk, they're all part of user groups, things get posted to the web. How we come across in Iowa affects me in Maryland, right? Just like how we discount in one place affects how we're going to price in another, same thing is true here. So, we want one, so one of the goals that we had as a group when we put this together was to standardize the message. So no matter who they talk to or what the circumstance is, when somebody comes to Merrant and asks the questions about how can you help me, they're going to get a consistent answer that's going to hit their points in a, in a professional, business-oriented way. Right? So there isn't a... A flippant answer one day, a different presentations here than there, right? Inconsistency kills us. That's pretty much what I've got. Does anybody have anything, questions, ideas, thoughts they'd like to throw out there? Mr. Landis. Yeah, one thing. Oh, hold on. Is. Yeah, one thing this with, with this uh, presentation you want to be aware of is every time that you present, you'll be changing it. So you'll change the company who you're presenting to and the list of requirements. Make sure that you change the company name. <laughs> Very key. Right. There, that's, that's a good point. There are a number of places where these slides need to be customized for each presentation. Obviously, my name's in a couple of places. So the intro slides, the agenda slides, right? The content isn't going to be modified, you know, too much. And you might drop this slide or drop that slide if you don't think it's appropriate for you. Or you may use this presentation and find, you know what? In the way that you happen to go pitch this stuff, that slide just really doesn't work for you ever. But other people like it, so we're going to keep it part of the standard, but you might not ever use it. So you have that flexibility. But these slides, obviously the name of, the, of your customer is not Sample Company Inc., but I put it up there. I want you to, you need to modify that. You need to modify this with your information. Who's on the call with you? If you have, and Customer Inc. And Customer Inc., right? You want to put the customer's name. Customer company name, your name, your essay's name. If you have an engagement manager on the call with you as well, make sure that they're represented up here. And the business objectives. You also, the, we originally, in, a, in an earlier iteration, we called this a requirement slide. Um, but requirements might not be what we want to be talking about here. Right? If they only want to talk tech at this point, we can. If they want to talk, what are the business objectives? Keeps them on a, the track that's about what's the value to them, as opposed to, how do I check out a file with a lock and merge this to that? Right? Because that's not going to make the difference between us and Start Team or us and Clearcase. But understanding their business objectives will. I don't think there are really any other places other than at the end where we make modifications, but you want to be aware of those. The pre sales folks will have a copy of this slide, and when you go to presentation and when you go do a place where they can upload it. It's very easy to take control of a place where you, there's a button you press and they hand off control. So you control the slides, you hand it back to them, they do their demo. They come back to you at the end give you your slides. Any other questions? Thoughts? Comments? Mr. Kriska. Uh, the concept's great, so how do you, you know, how do, do, you do it? it? It's like, you know, the commercial. The, well, we don't actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it's very easy, okay? Um, and we might want to get... Uh, Sean or Elaine or Richard up here, would you guys, let's ask the question, would you guys prefer to have them do their modifications and upload it? Or do you guys need to upload it when you set up the meeting? We can upload it, it's okay. not a problem. So you would, you'll all have a copy of this template, right? It'll be on KMS, you can pull it down, I'll also email it around today. So you're going to go do presentation for, you know, Boeing tomorrow. So you customize, your, the couple of slides need to be customized for Boeing. You'd email it to them or right, to say, here, once you know who's going to do your demo, you have that all scheduled through the tracker system. 
here's the presentation we're going to use. They upload it. That's it. Have you ever presented in Placeware? No. We may do a, and we've talked to Brant about this, we may do a short, a very short training on Placeware controls because it's very easy to do. There's literally one button you, when you, you can, if we log you in as a presenter, that you'll hit a button at one point and suddenly you'll be in control. And then you're the one running it. And then you can, they can hit a button and take control back. It's, there's nothing to download, there's nothing to, it's very simple. Right, so it's, it's going to be very easy to use. We're going to try to make it easy for you. And when, as we go through this process, if people are finding it difficult to do, let us know and we'll find ways to make it easier because we want you to do this. Mr. Merdler, microphone. Josh, you want to be mic guy? I just had one comment about the talking points. Talking points are great, but in order to add credibility, you want to make sure you don't come off as reading them. Yeah. I'm sure everybody thought about that as... Jeff came up and read them, and Jason came up. You got to know those. You, you have to come off as conversational. So that's uh -huh. my own comment. And that's, but you know what? That's about practice as much as anything. Um, and one of the things we've talked about doing is doing some role playing sessions here um, during the, uh, on, on some mornings. Maybe we'll do one a week for a couple of weeks where people want to get up and practice this with a sample audience. We're more than happy to do that. So we can do more. Today was a presentation, right? But if we want to do training on it, get you guys comfortable with it. Um, I sort of cut my teeth on this doing it to customers, sounding like I was reading it first and then, and I don't think they take it wrong if the content is good, right? And if you're not saying too much. Mr. Vorvik, Mike guy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, two things on the talking, talking points. Uh, on ASAP, I think you've got to soften what you say, anything about, you know, expensive uh, personnel, because those personnel might be sitting in the room. And they might threaten them as far as is this going to replace me, things like that. So you don't want to ask, um, get yourself in trouble right. with them. Second point that I would add to anything about services is one of the challenges, if you dig around with somebody that's evaluating the tools, they're going to spend money in it. They've got their time invested in it. One of their biggest challenges is adoption of the tool. Because you can, you know, if you have 50 developers and they may not be too cool on version control, then one of the best ways that you can get them to adopt and not be able to shoot holes in your solution is to make sure that uh, you have a crisp implementation with our services and you train them properly. So that's just another talking point. Anyone else? Anything? Yeah, at any point are you... Are you For the recording. <coughs> okay. At any point are you tying back in the, uh, the feedback from the TIG that you did with the customer earlier? Well, that was what the, at the very beginning, we have the business objectives or slash okay. requirements slide, and we're going to go and have a conversation about it. These are the things you said you wanted. Okay. Actually, it's uh, like two before this, right? Here, this one. These are the points you said you wanted. Let's go around the room, and is this exactly what you need? Do we miss anything? Do we misunderstand anything? Do you need to add anything? All right? And that's our opportunity to have that conversation. Um, the real point here now, let me, why did we do this, right? Why are we asking you guys to do this? The reason we're asking you to do this is, when I got here, the bar between telesales and the field was 25K, okay? The first few years I worked here, that was the bar. So if somebody wanted to spend $40,000 on software, they were going to get a field rep and an SA in their office doing a presentation. Today, if somebody wants to spend 75K, they still don't get that. But their expectations for what they want us to do, how they want us to come across to them, are the same as they were three years ago. That's not any different. They want this formal meeting methodology, but so we're trying to give you what you need in your hands to do exactly what our field reps do in the field. When I was a field rep, this is exactly what I was doing. This is the meeting that we were giving them, but now we can do it here. And what's different is today we have technologies like Placeware that allow us to do it from your desk. And it actually, how many sales cycles have you guys run where People needed to be at the demo, but there's somebody in an office in Chicago, and somebody's in San Francisco, and somebody's in New York, and five guys are in St. Louis, and we're not quite sure where to do it, and it takes us three months to schedule it because they have to fly around. It's not common, but it, it, it has happened to me more than a dozen times while I've been here. In this circumstance, it's irrelevant where they are. Now, with this technology, we can do these meetings, and they can log in from wherever they happen to be. And we can ship everywhere. I can ship in all your territories. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Are you getting, when you talk to the contacts, are you getting their contact information right then and there? Or you try to, that was maybe slowed it down? Um, 
That's a, the question was, are we getting the actual detailed contact information on all the contacts when we go through the who's in the room introduction slide? I'm not going to ask for everybody's phone number at that point. But I am going to write down their name and their role. What's their job title? What's their name? And I also, I, I also put personal comments down in my own notes about how active or participatory were they, were, were they in the meeting. So I, get to, so I know who do I want to follow up with. And I, I can always get their phone number later. Because I do have contacts and I could go back to you know, my sponsor, Bob, and say, hey, you know, this, Sally was in this meeting and she was talking a lot. She had a lot of questions. I'd like to give her a follow-up call. What's her number? And if you have a good sponsor, he's never going to say no to that. Mr. Whalen. And I'm not, I'm not sure if this was in any of your slides or maybe you could put it in more. At least it's something that's good to talk about is something that really comes across well for me is I paint the picture of the building that I'm in. I let people know that I'm in a corporate office. So they don't think you're just at some satellite office or working out of your house. Paint the picture you're in a corporate office. Uh, you're in the same building with most of North American support. You're in the same building with most of the vice presidents of sales, marketing, and also product development. It just gives a good picture and lets people know that, that you have access to all this, that you're right there. You're their main contact and you have access to all those resources. You, over, you, over, you overlook it sometimes. You know, they have no idea where you, they might think you're in some small little office, but you're really not. And that's a great point, and that's actually, I would try to find a way to make those points during this slide and we introduce who we are, what we do. So if I were to say, you know, here's our team, we're going to be doing a conference call today, we're going to discuss a variety of issues. I'm, at, you know, I'm Adam Cohen, here's Jim Landis, he's going to be doing our, our technical part of the demonstration. Here's Paul Curtis, who will address the transition services issues for you. I might throw up, we're, we all work in this facility, we're all blah, 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 answer line CR&D is there, the CEO is down the hall, right? So that's, a, that's the place to add that in. I don't think we would, I mean, we could talk about it, I, but I don't think, I think that's a talking point more than anything. Anybody, anything else? Do you guys think this is useful? Would you, would you use it? Okay. Um, my, and, and you need to practice. I think my results have been interesting to say the least. Um, I've, taken, I've taken tracker deals and turned them into pro deals. Um, I've taken, ver, you know, small deals. I did, a, I did one of these for an eight user version manager opportunity, okay? Because I was bored that day or I thought that there was more opportunity, it was a big company, small deal. And what happened is not only did we turn it into a pro deal, but three other project managers happened to be, heard that we were doing this, walked into the room, didn't introduce themselves early on, Right? Didn't want to say anything, didn't participate in the meeting, but they watched everything, they listened to everything, and my eight user version manager deal turned into a 45 user pro deal. Because I got that project buying pro and three others. And they all put it together and they bought. And that was distinctly based on not the technical demo, but the overview we did. They got a vision of something different. Mr. Crisco? We know, Mayor, and we've used PVCS in the past. We just want to see your product. And what do you, what do you say to them when you're, you know, you know, wanting to run through the, you know, the 13 minutes? They want to see the demo, but they don't want the intro. They just want, they just want to see tracker. I just want to see version manager. You know, every was it every Thursday? When are we doing the general okay, WebExes? Tuesday and Thursday. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we do an open okay. general meeting where they'll show you the technical product, so we can do that. These meetings, doing a custom placeware is designed for a customer who is open enough with us that they're willing to talk about their specific business issues. And we'll show you how we're going to deal with your specific business issues in our solution. How we're going to help you do what you're trying to do. If they don't want to tell us what they're trying to do, great. That's why every Tuesday and Thursday we do an open meeting. And they can not tell anybody who they are. Nobody will ask them any questions. They can see the product. Hell, you can download the stuff off the web. Right? And that's how I deal with it. Why am I going to do an hour or two worth of prep an hour or two worth of demo or meeting, and, I, and they're not even willing to tell me, right? It doesn't, there's no payoff for me. So why am I gonna do the work? So uh, the other thing is, if they're an existing customer, they'll be, well, it's also a, 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 okay, let me back up. To some extent, it's a judgment call. There are times and places where, if it's an ex your, your example was an existing customer. An existing customer says to me, I want to see Tracker. I use VM. We've used it for years. We know you guys. We love you guys. We want it. We're ready to start doing it. I want to understand how it's going to fit into this or that. But you're saying in that circumstance, they're not willing to, those guys are, in my experience, are always willing to sit through 10 minutes of how it all fits together. The time, yeah, the, and I'd cut out the things that aren't relevant to them. The times when I have found in my experience, people are unwilling to take the time to tell me their requirements or to see an overview is because either 
they're not power or they're not serious about talking to us. Right? So either you're talking to you know, somebody who's not power, nor will they ever be, or you're column fodder. And they're just checking a box for you. So do you want to take your time to do this for either of those two circumstances? I don't. Is there any, is there any other, I mean, is there a third possibility that I'm not thinking of? So we all agree? If they're saying that, they're wasting your time anyway, right? So why go do the work? Send them to the general. Any others? Okay, I'm going to email this around today. Um, there are a number of people have, oh, oh, I want to thank Dean and Nelson, by the way, for taking the time over the weekend to help with some of the graphics. She didn't like my pictures, so she changed a bunch of them. <laughs> um, I didn't like my pictures either. They were default, you know. Um, <laughs> If anybody has stylistic comments or recommendations for the look and feel of this, please feel free to get them to me, um, and I'll bring them to the group of people who have helped put them together, and we'll make modifications. This is an open forum. Um, if we, uh, for those who are watching the CD, we're going to put this on KMS, so anybody who's not in the room today, it'll be available. It's gonna, this is a company resource. Feel free to use it. Thanks. <laughs>